What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Kicker Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now I've got a Dive Trainer magazine. If you've not seen these, they're just basically advertisement magazines. You can get them free from your local dive center. Um, but I want to show you a cool little picture that I came across. This is an advertisement for Sea Life cameras. And if you didn't know, I'm a huge Sea Life fan. I've got several of their different cameras that I use. Um, but what I want you to focus on in this advertisement is what's attached to the camera. So I want you to look at the camera really closely. You'll notice that there are lights on the camera. And look how vibrant the coral is because of that. But if you turn off the lights, is it still gonna be the same vibrance or hold the same um, colors that you're seeing here in the video. Well, I think everybody on here is gonna understand, no, it's not. And I wanna show you in this video just how important, when you're carrying a camera, how important it is to carry a flashlight as well. So with that being said, let's get started. So guys, the video that we're about to watch was actually filmed by my dad or my business partner here at Lake Hickory Scuba, and he just led a trip down to Bon Air. And while down there, they did some light testing with a color chart. Basically, they went down to a given depth, they took a color chart, and they show you how colors change or they diminish as we descend. And we know from the open water program that through a process of absorption through turbidity, light actually absorbs in the water column, let alone the fact it also reflects and refracts as it goes through but based off the turbidity of the water it's going to absorb as we go deeper and we're going to lose colors and this is one of the reasons it's so important to always carry a flashlight with you especially if you're doing photography you want to get the true colors and the only way to do that is to actually add the light back in so let's go ahead and take a quick look at this video and i'll kind of give you my thoughts throughout it hey guys we're down here in beautiful Bon air uh we've been diving all week but this is our last morning dive. We fly home tomorrow. We're at Buddy Dive, as you can see, they have a beautiful house reef here. We're gonna be doing a dive today as an educational dive. We're gonna be dropping down roughly at about 120, but we're gonna be taking a color chart with us. We're gonna be filming with three different cameras, no added white balance whatsoever, to see the color changes as we drop down. Once we hit the 120 range, we're gonna add artificial light to it and see if we can bring the colors back. And you guys come along with us. Let's see how it looks. All right, I'm gonna pause it right here just for a second before Dad goes underwater. I want you to look behind him. Look at the crystal clear, pristine water. Like I said, this is down in Bonaire. This is part of the ABC Islands, if you're not familiar with Aruba, Bonaire, and Curacao. And you'll notice the really light blue color, that is the shallow area. And what you're actually looking at, that is the sunlight not only going through the water, but it's also reflecting off the sand on the bottom. And then out behind that is the darker blue area. That's the deeper depths. And you can see that the sunlight's not quite penetrating quite as much. And remember, there's three processes here. We have light reflection, that's where the light bounces off the surface. You have light refraction, that's where it kind of breaks in the water column, or kind of like a prism effect. And then, of course, you also have light um, absorption, and that's caused by the turbidity in the water. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it again. I'm not quite sure what depth he's at. If I had to guess, he's probably around 20 feet or so. Looks like the coral's another 10 to 15 foot below him. Um, but you'll notice based off the color chart alone and the color of the coral that's underneath him, you can already see how quickly it's diminished. Now, like I said, if I had to guess, he's probably around 20 feet, but comparing it to the color chart on the surface there in the, in the top left corner, um, you can already see at 20 feet how quickly the, the color and the light has diminished. Go ahead and pause it again. There's a great example. See how the reds almost turn just brown? It, it's changing. Of course, red's the first color to go. Um, and if you're 
not familiar with how the light itself diminishes or the colors. It actually goes in the color spectrum of the rainbow. So Roy G. B. of red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. If you look at the orange, the orange has already turned green. So if you've ever been on a reef and you look down and say, man, that's a green piece of coral, it's probably not actually green. It's probably going to be orange if you ever shine the light on it. All right, so now we're basically at um, 10 meters or 33 feet. All right, now he's, I believe according to his computer, it looks like he's around 44, 45 feet, which is a typical reef, if you will. Um, and you're even gonna see some fish in here swim by. Uh, even the fish, the color of the fish are diminished as well. All you gotta do is just simply shine your light on, that color is gonna come back. Uh, we'll stop it again right here. Looks like he's at 50 foot of depth. And of course the red is almost just turned black. Uh, the orange is kind of a lime green. The yellow still has a little bit of yellow tint. The green still has a green tint to it. The uh, light blue has not really changed that much. Um, the blue has started to, to lighten up a little bit. Uh, and of course the indigo has just turned pure violet, just turned purple here. start to see a little of those fish in the background really no telling what color they are without a light now I don't know if you can see it in that bottom right hand corner there there's what I call the little dory fish look how vibrant and blue it is because blue is one of the um, last colors to go so you got Roy GB of red orange yellow green blue so it's cool to see that it was still kind of vibrant as he as he descended down All right, so now he's around that 66 foot mark. So 60 foot is where we consider uh, diving to become deep diving. And this is where you really want to get trained in deep diving before you go any deeper. Uh, but we can already see how the colors have just completely uh, diminished out. You know, he just crossed over that 80 foot mark here. Um, and what's amazing is even though the colors themselves are diminishing, the corals not changed. It's looked the same literally since he went under at that 20 foot. So anytime you see something underwater like that, you never really know what the true color is without some type of uh, say artificial light source or even ambient light from the surface. If you're going down deep enough to where that ambient light can't really penetrate, you're never gonna know what true colors you're actually looking at.
So we're getting close to the 100 foot mark. You can see the difference in the, in the color chart from the surface to, to the bottom there. But all the coral just, it's like a dull gray, maybe even a, a grayish blue color. It all just kind of merges together. Doesn't look anything like we saw in the magazine there. Now we've exceeded the 100 foot mark and even the, even the fish swimming by, it's, they're, they're just a, a dull pastel color. I'll stop it just temporarily. Look at the red. The red went from kind of a, a reddish to a, 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 a gray to a black. It's still constantly changing. The orange has went from orange to green to almost a grayish green there. It's just amazing. Now we can really see the difference in the yalla. The yalla's almost turned, I don't even know what color to call the yalla there. Um, but yeah, it's all because the light is being absorbed, it's being refracted, and it's being reflected. All the fish look identical. No color difference in the fish. Now we're getting close to 120 here. Looks like we looks like he's come off the coral bed. He's going down in the sand now. Probably going to touch down here in just a second. And looks like he's bottoming and out around 125, 126 feet. Now I'm going to pause it here because he's fixing to add light back to it. And I want, I want you to really take in how much a light can make a difference when you're underwater. Now he has switched cameras here um, just a little bit and this, th the camera that we just switched to does have a dive mode which adds a little bit of red back into it. You're still not gonna get that vibrant color like we had at the surface or like you see in magazines. But when he, as soon as he adds his flashlight to it, you'll see those colors just pop right back up. And there you go. Clear distinction, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Looks like they got a little bit of current there. So yeah, huge, right, huge guys, difference simply by taking know. a lot with you when uh, you're underwater. I'm water. a little trouble trying to hold my hand on the computer and the paperwork and keeping it from folding. I know it was folding up, but we tried to lay everything down on the bottom and get you a good idea of what the color was down there. Uh, so we're gonna go back and edit this video out and see if we can't get you some good film. Thank you. So yeah, guys, there you go. That's the importance of taking a lot with you. Even, even if you're diving warm tropical waters and it's crystal clear and it's midday and the sun's just shining down, you still need a lot with you, uh, especially if you're doing photography and videography. Now, I know somebody's going to say, Brian, I've watched your videos. You don't add light back in. And that's true. I don't. And a lot of times, even in the editing process, I won't go and add those colors back in. I know a lot of YouTubers will do that. I know a lot of professional photographers that do that. And that's kind of their job. My job is to teach you the realities of scuba diving. And that's why a lot of times we don't add light back into our videos. We want you guys to see exactly what you're going to see when you're under there. And it also shows the importance of why you need a good light. If we were to show you all the vibrant colors with our camera systems, and then you get to that destination, you're not gonna see exactly what you saw on the screen simply because there's a lot of editing there and we're adding stuff back in. Now, one of the cool things that you can do if you can't afford, say, a big camera system with a lot of lighting, is simply get a camera that has a dive mode built in where it automatically adds those colors back in. Some cameras will even have filter systems where you can just snap them right on if you're diving, say, 60 foot 
or even to the surface, something like that. And you're going to get a vibrant color from your images and your videos without the expense of a bunch of big bulky lights and things like that. But guys, if you're interested in learning more about underwater photography and videography, check out the SSI photo video course. It's a really great, great class. You don't have to have an expensive camera to take it. Uh, you can use a GoPro. You can use any underwater camera. You can even use your cell phone if you have an underwater housing during the class itself. But it's a great class. It's something that you and your instructor is going to spend a little bit of time in the classroom learning about the mechanics of a camera and editing and things like that. And then, of course, they're going to take you over to the pool and allow you to practice with that camera and try to get some good photos as well. But guys, that's going to do it for this video. I want to give a huge shout out to my dad for filming that for us. And if you've never checked out any of the ABC Islands, definitely go. They're a great place to go dive. My favorite of the three, of course, is Curacao, but Aruba and Bonaire's got some great diving as well. But guys, I'm going to go ahead and sign off for today. Take care, God bless, and I'll see you in the next video.